Uh, uh, I guess my, my opinion is that uh, Lev Petrovich was uh, one of the most decent uh, people who acted under condition of Soviet environment. And this uh, also included his own uh, comrades and colleagues. Uh, now what I had in mind, have in mind is that, uh, let's say, a young person came from a scientific province and uh, he is interesting to do uh, condensed matter and there is nobody around him who can supervise him. And in addition, uh, his name was Schneerson, which did not help him. It was in 1970. And uh, uh, Lev Petrovich took him as a PhD student and uh, gave an interesting uh, problem. Uh, he could not do it, uh, tackle it himself. It was uh, uh, too technical. But um, Dimit Milnitsky uh, joined him, and together Milnitsky and Schneerson did what it was the first paper about quantum phase uh, transition before Hertz, before Millis, before uh, when this term was even uh, introduced. Uh, as to me, I always uh, benefited from his friendly attitude. And uh, in, some, there was a sp in addition, there was a very special moment. Uh, that was in the uh, day when I was becoming uh, getting a degree of Doctor of Science. It is not the same as PhD, much more serious and important. And it is certain, uh, uh, no, uh, in some non-official way, it was, uh, you got tenure in Lando Institute when you do it. In that. So, um, uh, it is some procedure with certain ritual and chairman at certain moment uh, as usual, uh, ask public uh, to uh, share their opinion. And to my amazement, uh, Lev Petrovich stepped forward and uh, explained why did he uh, liked my works about disordered electrons and um, uh, what is it was why it was uh, important and interesting. Uh, for him. And uh, uh, please keep in mind that uh, it was not in the spirit of AGD book. Uh, it was illustrated by diagrams and so on, but it was completely different technique, uh, which he never uh, used himself. And uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, he was, uh, uh, did not have resistance and uh, appreciate all that. Okay, so this is in addition explanation why did I choose this subject uh, for this talk. I will talk about thermal transport in uh, disordered electron. Works were done together with Georg Schwitter, he's in University of Alabama. And uh, um, uh, main question is uh, what about how to introduce the uh, uh, technique for studying thermal uh, transport, and in particular, uh, from the experimental point of view of interest, uh, what can be said about widemann franz law in disordered interacting conduct uh, conductors. And the idea is that this is non-trivial enough system, and studying widemann franz law in this uh, system may uh, provide with certain uh, general un understanding of uh, what one can say about Wiedemann Franz law. Uh, so, in nowadays, there are different kind of uh, uh, attitudes to Wiedemann Franz law. Uh, if you read some modern paper in about graphene, you may see that people uh, consider some 30% deviation 
of uh, the Lorentz number as something which can be prescribed uh, to Fermi liquid correction or something of, of that kind and so on. On the other hand, people who are more experienced in the business, and that is uh, those who study um, uh, non-Fermi liquid si system, they use Wiedemann Franz law as some indication whether there is the uh, non-Fermi liquid behavior or not. And here it is example. So one can see something um, about 10% of deviation uh, from Wiedemann Franz law and it is taken seriously. And if after that one will manipulate with magnetic field and uh, uh, switch off um, uh, uh, magnets, then uh, it is uh, almost restored uh, to the nominal value. So uh, 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 it is important uh, uh, property and as I say, attitude to this uh, depends on the culture in, of the community in this kind of questions. So of course, unlike what we have for the Anzager relation, wiedemann franz law is not a law, but uh, some relation which is uh, uh, only approximate. And the uh, question is, uh, what is the range of uh, validity? Now, uh, naive arguments about it is that since charge and heat are transported by the same carriers, uh, that's why we do have wiedemann franz law. Indeed, this is working for uh, you know, free particles and even in uh, Fermi liquid. But uh, this is uh, nevertheless not an argument. And the reason is that uh, uh, let's say uh, ordinary current, if it is presented by momentum, is a conserving uh, quantity. Uh, energy current is not conserving uh, quantity. For one, there exists word identity. For the other one, it uh, does not. So uh, there are questions about role of in inelasticity. Uh, also for heat, uh, important role is from Nernst's uh, theorem. At, uh, uh, t equals zero. So physics of these two entities are rather different. On technical uh, side, it starts even on the level of Fermi liquid when one try to prove um, uh, Wiedemann Franz uh, and it indeed hold. The point is that one needs to uh, transpose the uh, velocity from where it is e uh, entering into the uh, mm, just uh, uh, the definition of uh, current to the place where the actual quasi-particle energy is. And uh, so one need to make this kind of uh, uh, relation. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, it holds that eventually uh, you one get, after all this renormalization, this kind of expression, and here it is energy and, uh, for heat, and here it is charge for electrons. But it demands certain efforts, and uh, which were originally done by Jim Langer. Okay, now, uh, so uh, the example which is con was considered is 2D electron liquid, which is, has non-trivial uh, correction. And uh, uh, one is needed to construct some comprehensive theory, uh, which when uh, study everything, the terms which uh, when wiedemann farans law fulfill and the terms which deviate, and to, in this way, to get some uh, understanding. So uh, uh, problem which one has, one, uh, the point is that uh, in order to perform, let's say, uh, 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 renormalization group analysis, one need a uh, nonlinear sigma model. But in nonlinear sigma model, it is not clear how to introduce uh, the gradient of uh, temperature in order to uh, just see the thermal effect. Uh, the other thing is that you can use kinetic equation, but then it's not clear how to do uh, renormalization group analysis. So the uh, resolution is uh, to uh, de derive some 
extension of nonlinear sigma model with so sources which are uh, called gravitational potential, so extended nonlinear sigma model with this uh, gravitational potential. And uh, this gravitation potential mimics the uh, temperature variation. The idea for that comes back very far ago when uh, in this paper it was noted that actually ordinary gravitation introduced uh, uh, the gradient of um, temperature. The effect is very small, but the idea was uh, uh, used uh, by Lattinger to introduce artificial gravitational potential where effect will be strong enough, and in this way one can mimic uh, the uh, variation of temperature. And the hint how it is working is that look, if you see that if one expands this change of temperature, it can be uh, 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 interpreted as some uh, variation of your Hamiltonian, which is gra gravitational potential. And uh, in equilibrium, if you have uh, this uh, gravitational potential, then the gradient of uh, temperature will compensate it. So instead of studying the effect of temperature, one can study the effect of these artificial uh, terms, which are introduced um, uh, uh, in the system. The unpleasant point in this thing is that if you study electric conductivity, then it is only one term of the uh, electric field, electric potential, which is needed to be added. Now for the gravitational potential, you act on everything. So each term in this, uh, uh, in our Hamiltonian, uh, will be inf it, is, it is influenced by the temperature and correspondingly it will be influenced by the gravitation potential. So one need to work with this uh, uh, complicated object and then calculate some correlation function and in this way uh, to find out the response uh, to the gravitation potential and correspondingly response to the gradient of temperature. Unpleasant thing is about Disorder. Disorder also in this system, and it has also a gravitational potential which act on the disorder scattering. And as we know, and here it is one of the uh, result of Garkov and Abrikosov, uh, how to average, and that is how we usually work. Uh, so we need to, uh, how to do this uh, averaging uh, over uh, and disorder. Usually it is called cross techniques. Uh, but uh, in this case, it is um, non-convenient. So one uh, is uh, the way which we did with um, uh, Georg Schwitter to uh, eliminate this uh, uh, term for the uh, uh, disorder by this kind of uh, uh, just rede redefinition of field. But the price is that now we have uh, uh, in all this what was gravitational potential, now we have terms which are not linear, but also uh, uh, quadratic and so on. And we do need response with respect to the second order of uh, potential. So there is this new term, which is the price for this um, transformation, which allows now to work with disorder in the conventional way. So eventually, all that is producing some number of this kind of uh, uh, term. So that is how a linear term uh, acts. That is how this quadratic term works. And first thing to do is to check that everything is consistent, that these different terms are consistent. And one can uh, do it. Let me skip uh, this thing. Then eventually what come out uh, of this uh, thing, that one may take this uh, extended nonlinear sigma model extended by this uh, gravitational potential and start to do a regular procedure of renormalization and to see uh, just what will be after this renormalization a response to this uh, uh, fields. And what uh, turned out is that so you do have different uh, energy regions. Now, where we are now, if we are interested from the region where disorder is from one of a tower, I'm talking about energy, 
uh, up to the uh, temperature and uh, then next region from temperature and below. And uh, what come out is that uh, the uh, Wiedemann Franz law is not violated in this renormalization group um, uh, uh, in interval, despite that everything had uh, strong uh, uh, correction. It's actually uh, not a new result originally. It was obtained uh, by this collaboration and uh, Gavi Kotler and Patrick are here who participate among uh, other uh, in, in this thing. But of course, language is completely uh, different and uh, um, just uh, some kind of um, better understanding can be achieved. Okay, so despite that there are plots of correction, despite that there are no quasi-particles, so statement that uh, heat and charge are carried by the same carrier, there are no carriers uh, because of disorder, there are only some diffusion modes and so on. Despite all that, the Wiedemann Franz law holds in this region. So statement which can be said at this moment is that if one is considering virtual transition not related to the uh, actual uh, kinetic, then uh, Wiedemann Franz will hold. Uh, but if you go further on to the region of the other uh, temperature, then there will be additional corrections, which in the case when uh, one deal with the Coulomb interaction in 2D are uh, just of the same kind, the logarithmical correction of the same strengths as the, uh, as the renormalization group uh, correction. And uh, these uh, uh, terms which uh, originate from actual kinetics will violate the uh, wiedemann franz law. And how it is worked is that uh, one has to calculate uh, uh, energy energy uh, uh, correlation function. That is uh, this uh, variation with respect to the gravitational potential. And if you have something of that kind, then you will have wiedemann franz law. But if there is something in the middle, a certain rest scattering, then it will be violated. Now, when you are dealing with the Fermi liquid or something like that, when this uh, amplitude here is featureless constant, then you see that the result will give zero because you have this epsilon and epsilon prime and integrals which you have uh, for them separately uh, will be zero. So the only way how this thing will uh, be not zero and violate wiedemann franz law if this uh, um, rest scattering is energy dependent. And then if it is energy dependent, this two uh, frequency, epsilon and epsilon prime, may speak with each other and they will provide one with a, a finite uh, result. So there are separation between the processes which are on-shell and off-shell. So off-shell, no violation and not such uh, uh, term. On the on-shell, you may have this kind of term, and this kind of term may lead to the uh, violation. Now, terms are looking like that, and it is only illustration. In all this technology, nobody calculate true diagrams. They are generated by this nonlinear sigma model uh, by itself. And uh, there are all this number of terms, and uh, these are terms when you have this different energy, which speak with, the, with each other because of this insertion, and uh, uh, they lead to the violation of the wiedemann franz law. So uh, all these additional contributions are proportional to the imaginary part of the Coulomb interaction which stand here. In other words, it is an indeed kinetic, some kind of decay processes which are uh, just provide you with the imaginary part of the interaction, which tell us that if process is virtual, no imaginary part, Wiedemann-Franz. If there are something related to 
true kinetic, when it, you have some kind of imaginarity, decay and so on, then you may expect a violation. Uh, now, uh, the answer, just more specific, the answer for this correction is uh, uh, positive, namely, the uh, just heat uh, just is more active than uh, transport. Now, in this uh, case, and also we checked that all uh, correction which can be for this particular term dropped out. And in this case, uh, that is the uh, uh, final answer. OK, now one last uh, uh, point. There was a very non-trivial element in this calculation. Namely, uh, you have this gravitational potential, and you need to do all this uh, renormalization of them, and so on. And what happened is actually that they are uh, renormalized like MED. But if you are dealing with correct initial condition, that is what was your initial condition, that that one is zero, and uh, all these uh, things are um, uh, gravitational potential are equal, then one has fixed point. And due to this fixed point, due to the fact that under this condition they are not renormalized, Due to that, one gets this uh, result that in the course of the normalization group um, process, uh, one do not have the additional correction, a different uh, modification of the heat uh, transport and uh, uh, because of that, widemann franz law. And actually, all that is, has a direct connection with the conservation of energy which is encrypted in this uh, just long expression. It still does know that your in initial system was, uh, has elastic impurity, and that's why uh, energy is conserved. And because of that, you have this kind of uh, uh, fixed point. And due to this fixed point, the rest statement, which I already claimed. So it is actually have a rather complicated uh, structure. It is not that nothing going on, etc. It 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 wish to uh, explode like mad, but this kind of constraint uh, just keep it in the uh, in this constraint. Okay, that is something about uh, experiment, namely how all that will correction will can be observed in case uh, of measurement in uh, 2D. If one do some kind of rescattering. Then for ordinary transfer, one get universal curve. That's how it is looking in MOSFET. Here now, because of correction, it will be violated. But uh, some features of similarity will remain. Namely, for heat transport, that is for ordinary transport. That is for heat transport. These curves are now not universal, not one curve. They are different. But maximum is uh, 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 when you do it in a proper year. Uh, rescaling maximum is shifted uh, uh, in a universal way. So, uh, in principle, it is uh, something which can be observed. Okay, that is my summary. So, uh, I will skip what I already uh, say um, a few times, but just to, to repeat that uh, if some kind of statement, when one see uh, a uh, uh, violation of the uh, Wiedemann Franz law, uh, and uh, uh, it is not taken seriously, uh, that is clear indication uh, that uh, uh, either there are some not understanding or not accurate measurement. It is something which exists, but uh, exists in a limited um, uh, value. And each time when there is such a violation, one should address the question, what kinetic effect is uh, responsible for uh, uh, this violation? Just statement that uh, 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 some kind of renormalization. Renormalization do not uh, lead to the violation of Wiedemann Franz. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. A couple of questions. Here's one.
Excuse me, why is this analysis uh, indifferent to fa various phases from this uh, nonlinear sigma model in two plus one dimensions has quantum critical point and various crossovers and, r and phases? Is this independent of where you are in the phase diagram? Uh, no. Level of richness of this uh, uh, problem is similar. About the critical point, that's of course what I was uh, uh, interested in. That's why this one was done in order to learn how things are. The problem is that this is, in a sense, universal model, namely the model which is, uh, it is uh, uh, just minimal model which exists uh, for disordered system and whatever your uh, dealing with, it will come to that. In case of uh, uh, just c uh, quantum critical thing, okay, metal insulated transition is an example of quantum critical phase transition. So in that sense, everything what I'm saying is uh, valid for this particular example. The question is that for many others, you need each time to formulate what is uh, adequate model and then to repeat a similar program and so on. No, no, I mean the sigma model in two plus one dimensions has three phases and one quantum critical point. And... Uh, <laughs> They try to explain you that uh, uh, it is, to a certain extent, uh, only terminology, but the essence uh, is very can be is very different. Indeed, in the quantum phase transition, one can address similar question. And as I say, uh, metal insulation transition is also example of quantum phase transition. But you need each time uh, to reproduce the same program for the system which is under discussion. Here you had another question. Oh, yeah. um, S Sasha, I I is there some intuition for why uh, Lorentz number normalization is positive? Is positive? Uh, I uh, definitely. Uh, that's exactly what Lev Petrovich wants told me when I was trying to explain him what I'm doing now, that I'm doing heat transport under this condition. And the answer was, listen, I don't have any intuition about thermal transport. Now, after doing all this work, I had certain things become settled, but about the sign of this uh, uh, cor correction, there were many of them, and they uh, just in principle uh, just uh, as usually with correction, you may just somehow reshuffle, and that's why you cannot say this is because density of states and, and so on. There are uh, the 10 of them which, in principle, I can reshuffle that's with, uh, when, the, when they cal cancel each other. So the answer, no. Can, can I uh, try to force you to <coughs> say the statement about corrections arising from energy smaller than the renormalization group interval in some uh, uh, some other uh, more, f more general fashion. Are you saying that no. there has to be a violation of hydrodynamics or some something something which I can carry back uh, in, in a more general context? No, you have, uh, okay, first of all, the statement about this correction and so on, again, is to a certain extent specific. It is for Coulomb interaction. For Coulomb interaction, indeed Coulomb interaction in 2D, which was uh, uh, originally uh, long range and uh, et, et cetera, only in this case you have correction of the same kind as uh, 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 renormalization group correction, and that's why I can analyze them. Otherwise, the uh, uh, situation will be uh, Im impossible. So would it be not Coulomb interaction, not uh, something which is more strong and so on? Correction will be, exist, but the, it will be impossible, at least for me, to, uh, to calculate. Now, for Coulomb interaction, 
I can answer just how things are. You have polarization operator. In this polarization operator, you have imaginary part because of the decay. So what you have is something of, uh, let's say, that kind when you have something when there are certain cross section when you will have four quasi particles, you start from two. Now, because of this uh, imaginary part and because of this inelasticity, it turns into four. And this kind of thing, uh, just all of them are of this kind, provide you with uh, something which is uh, violating Wiedemann Franz law. And that is the origin of my statement. If you do have true kinetic, not virtual transition which you can just pack in something, then this uh, uh, things become uh, uh, just uh, uh, violating Wiedemann Franz law and the answer is, as, as I say, for me can be arbitrary. And are you, do this, this Coulomb interaction with this order, do, do they allow you to be to, to stay within the hydrodynamic limit? I can, I can Im imagine under certain conditions I would not say, say that I see uh, some uh, features of uh, hydrodynamics because uh, what I see here is a process. You have two particles. In this uh, uh, two particles, because of this uh, inelasticity effect, which is in polarization operator, you eventually have uh, something which is in the, uh, uh, transform into four particles. And now in, in hydrodynamics, uh, it is something when you start with this uh, inelasticity to organize something else. Here, uh, that is the end of the story. Only this kind of process of decay provide you with something. I don't do, uh, I cannot see just what else can be done. And uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, it is not that I, uh, on this basis, uh, can go further on to organize a new regime with the hydrodynamical flow when this kind of thing in this problem will become dominant. After all, disorder is still dominant guy. Uh, so that's why this, uh, 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 this regime is still limited. It is not that you may have uh, uh, it by itself because of inelasticity to have some new uh, dynamical regime. So it is still on the level of some correction. So we have one more short I was just curious whether um, how this calculation would have gone if instead of using uh, potentials, gravitational potentials, you use gravitational vector potentials. With, with a, in, using current rather than energy density. No, just uh, uh, you have something of that kind. Now the main step was that uh, I need to average with disorder. Not the main, first step, done. As a result, I have uh, something uh, of this uh, gravitational potential. What the next I'm doing, I just calculating the, uh, the uh, just correlation function, which is second response with respect to uh, this thing, and uh, looking on this correlation uh, uh, function. From this correlation function, I can extract what is my thermal conductivity, and in a similar way, what is my electric conductivity, and I compare them uh, with each other. Now, for the uh, thermal conductivity, as, as I say, there are different terms, those which uh, do not contain uh, this kind of uh, uh, complication and which do contain. Those which do not contain, they could, uh, just provide me with the same kind. Uh, also, uh, it is something non-trivial here because when I will cut, uh, do a similar thing for electric conductivity, this process will be different. Nevertheless, uh, it is about that it is carried by the same uh, heat and, and electric field carried by the same thing. Nevertheless, you do have uh, uh, the same answer. Now, new process is this kind, and that's, uh, but all that is, in a sense, uh, this uh, extended, we call it extended nonlinear sigma model, is quite complicated thing, but it is automatic. You just, after that, you know, go ahead and everything is under control. So I think this is a good time to uh, stop and continue discussions in private. Let's thank the speaker once more.